Hey everyone and welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over a quick social security update, a social security reform update, and a possible increase as much as $2,400 per year. So we're gonna be covering five different bills that could possibly be passed either later on this year or perhaps next year in 2024. So we're gonna be going over these five different bills, what's in them, and of course, also the likelihood of them passing. But before I go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm, and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Okay, so the first bill that involves Social Security Today actually has a really good shot at passing just because it does happen to have a lot of co-sponsors and also has a lot of bipartisan support. So we have Democrats and Republicans both supporting this bill. This has to do with something called the WEP or the Windfall Elimination Revision or and the GPO, which is the Government Pension Offset. So basically, if you work a job in your life where you're eligible to receive a pension, but then you also work other jobs throughout your life where you're paying into the Social Security Trust Fund. Well, because you're working those jobs where you're eligible for the pension, you receive the pension, because of that, you're actually going to be receiving less in Social Security benefits than you would have been if you did not receive that pension. Now, this is something that they're trying to take back and make it so people who have limited benefits or less benefits than, the, than what they would have been they get all those benefits back. And this bill actually has a lot of co-sponsors. So this bill is being led by Abigail Spanberger and Garrett Graves in the House. And right now it does have 300 co-sponsors. So according to their website here, U.S. Representatives Abigail Spanberger today joined U.S. Representative Garrett Graves and 100 of their U.S. House colleagues in urging the U.S. House Ways and Means Committee to hold a hearing on reforms to the windfall elimination provision and the government pension offset like their bipartisan Social Security Fairness Act. The Spanberger-led Social Security Fairness Act, which now has 298 co-sponsors, actually it's now up to 300, would eliminate both the WEP and the GPO, two provisions of the Social Security Act that unfairly reduce or eliminate Social Security benefits for millions of Americans who have devoted much of their careers to public service, including federal employees, police officers, firefighters, and educators. The WEP impacts approximately 2 million Social Security beneficiaries and the GPO impacts nearly 800,000 retirees. The article goes on to say that currently, the WEP reduces the earned Social Security benefits of an individual who also receives a public pension from a job not covered by Social Security. For example, educators who do not earn Social Security in the public schools, but who work part-time or during the summer in jobs covered by Social Security have reduced benefits, even though they pay into the system just like the others. Likewise, the GPO affects the spousal benefits of people who work as federal, state, or local government employees, including police officers, firefighters, and educators if the job is not covered by Social Security. The GPO reduces by two-thirds the benefit received by surviving spouses who also collect a government pension. So once again, if this were to pass, this would help a lot of folks out. And let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Do you believe that it's unfair for them to receive a reduced Social Security benefit just because they're also receiving a pension? Now, the next four bills that we're going to be talking about in today's video really have to do with the Social Security Trust Fund and the fact that in the next 10 years, if nothing is done, well, unfortunately, it's going to go insolvent, which means for everyone receiving benefits at that point in time, there is going to be a cut of 20 to 25 percent in their benefits. So just to put this in dollar terms, if you're receiving a $2,000 per month benefit in 2033, that means you're then going to receive a cut of $500. So your monthly benefit would then only be $1,500 per month. So a $500 cut would obviously be pretty devastating. So the next four bills that we're going to be talking about address this issue and fix this issue moving forward. So then we don't have that cut of 20 to 25%. So the first one we're going to be talking about is by a senator in Rhode Island, Sheldon Whitehouse. So in his bill, it's called Medicare and Social Security Fair Share Act. So in his bill, it's going to preserve Medicare and Social Security while safeguarding benefits. So it's going to require taxpayers with over $400,000 in income to contribute a fair share to Social Security. So no matter what their source of income is, high income taxpayers would pay the same tax rate on their income exceeding that threshold. And it would also require taxpayers with incomes above $400,000 to contribute more to Medicare and close a loophole in the law that favors high earners as proposed by President Biden. So his bill would not do anything to increase benefits 
whatever you're receiving in the say 2033 or now, it would not increase other than the cost of living adjustments, but they would also not decrease at the same time. So all this is really doing is implementing more taxes on Americans, those earning above $400,000 per year. Then we have these, uh, the second bill, uh, the third bill in this video, but the second bill that would change, uh, you know, would, would fix the social security solvency issue. And this one probably has the best chance of passing out of all of them. That's because it does happen to be bipartisan. So we have a Republican Senator in Bill Cassidy. He's in Louisiana. And then we have an independent who votes mostly with the Democrats in Angus King. He is a Senator in Maine. They have something called the new big deal, which would fix the program. Now what they would end up doing is they would end up borrowing $1.5 trillion and this money would be invested. So think like the stock market, real estate, things like that. And they would leave that money invested over the next 70 years. And over the next 70 years, that money would grow. And then that money would be shuttled back into the trust fund where it would then pay off future benefits. Now that would cover around 75% of the shortfall. They would still have to cover the remaining 25%. So other ideas that have been thrown around have been like raising the full retirement age up to 69. Perhaps they could implement more taxes on Americans Right now you pay 6.2 to 12.4% into the Social Security Trust Fund out of each paycheck. So they're talking about maybe lifting that up to say like 6.4 to 12.8% or maybe just, you know, uh, raising the income threshold in which you have to pay into the trust fund. So that's another idea that is being thrown out there. Once again, that is bipartisan. It is not yet actually in, it, in its way of official bill. It's just something that's being talked about right now. And you know, in the future, perhaps next year, it could be the year that this thing could actually pass. So now at this point, we're gonna be talking about the next two bills. These bills are probably going to be your favorites just because they receive a, just because in them, they have a lot of extra benefits in them. You're gonna be receiving pretty big increases. So these are probably going to be the two bills that you're absolutely going to love the most. So the first one we're gonna be talking about is the one by John Larson. This bill is called the Social Security 2100 Act. So in this bill, it does 12 different things. So it's going to increase benefits across the board by 2%. It's also going to improve the cost of living adjustment. So it reflects the inflation actually experienced by seniors. They're gonna uh, use either the CPIE or the CPIW, whichever happens to be higher. So every single year, you should receive the maximum benefit that you should be. It also is going to increase benefits to boost lower income seniors. It's going to improve benefits for widows and widowers from two income households. It's going to restore student benefits up to age 26 for the dependent children of disabled, deceased, or retired workers. It's also going to increase access to benefits for children living with grandparents or other relatives. It's also going to repeal the windfall elimination provision in GPO that currently penalizes many public servants. So just like that bill that we mentioned earlier on in today's video, it would do just that if this bill were also to pass. It also ends the five month waiting period to receive disability benefits. It increases benefits by an additional 5% for the most elderly who have been receiving benefits for 15 years or more. It provides caregiver credits to ensure that people, mostly women, are not penalized in retirement for taking time out of the workforce for children or other dependents. It also ends the disability benefit cliff, replacing it with a gradual offset for earnings. It cuts taxes for middle income beneficiaries. It corrects an unintended flaw in how social security benefits are wage indexed to prevent benefits from dropping if the wage index decreases. It also ensures that these benefits do not result in reduced SSI payments or a loss of eligibility for Medicaid or CHIP. And then finally, it also combines the old age and survivors insurance and the disability insurance trust funds into one fund to ensure seamless benefit payments. So they basically do all that by making sure that people who earn above $400,000 per year continue paying into the Social Security Trust Fund. Now the final bill that we're going to be talking about in today's video is the one by Bernie Sanders. You probably heard a lot about it. That's called the Social Security Expansion Act. So in this bill, what it would do is it would extend the solvency of Social Security for 75 years by requiring people who earn above $400,000 per year to continue to pay into the trust fund. It would also expand Social Security benefits across the board for current and new beneficiaries. So under this bill, Social Security benefits for current and existing recipients would be increased by $2,400 per year or $200 per month. It would also increase the cost of living adjustments. So they would use either the CPIW or the CPIE, whichever happened to be greater. And they would also improve the special minimum benefit for Social Security recipients. So the if you're receiving the special minimum benefit, that would result in a $485 increase per month. 
so obviously that would be very huge as well. Then we would also restore student benefits up to age 22 for children of disabled or deceased workers, and then we would also combine the Disability Insurance Trust Fund with the Old Age and Survivors Trust Fund as well to help senior citizens and people with disabilities. So those are the five bills that have a chance of passing either by the end of the 2023, most likely not this year, but perhaps next year in 2024. But I would love to read your thoughts and comments below. Which of these bills are your favorite? Which one would you like to see pass? But that's all we have for today's video. I certainly hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate if you could give this video a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you in the next video.